What's up everyone? We are coming at you from sunny Bexhill on Sea, parked up in my knackered out old rusty van. Starting off with contest news. Yep, surprisingly, there's contest news with a COVID-19 pandemic going on, which has cancelled all contests. Feast is going digital. They're holding an online video contest with 47,000 euros prize money. That is going to replace Feast Montpellier, which is the first time it hasn't been held since 1997. How they're going to do it is riders in park, street and flatland are all going to send in videos that they filmed themselves. They're going to be judged partly by judges from the UCI and partly by people watching on the Feast website. They're going to send in qualification videos. They're going to final it down to eight riders. Those eight finalists are going to be put head to head with a second video that they'll put forward. They can just stick with the first, but Feast are advising to go with a second video. Those finalists are going to go head to head. They're going to bring it down to four finalists. Those four finalists are going to go head to head and then that will bring you the battle for first and the battle for third. And from that you'll get your UCI Feast contest results. The results from this contest aren't counting as UCI points and won't count towards the Olympic placing. Feast have said resi and airbag clips don't count. In other contest news, Source have come through with an update on the Battle of Hastings. So they've kept the date of the 4th to the 6th of September but it's going to be happening behind closed doors. It's going to be a bit weird without crowds surrounding the top of the Source Park, making loads of noise, cheering, screaming, banging on the sides, but it's still going to go ahead. There's going to be riders, there's going to be the staff, there's going to be media. That's about it. But there's going to be a live stream so everyone can watch it at home as it happens. The prize purse is the same, the teams are the same except for a wildcard team because they haven't been able to hold the qualifier rounds to get a wildcard team, but they're carrying forward the one winner of the video comp for next year's wildcard team. So it's all to watch in 2021 as well. In video news, a full length video has just dropped from the crew in the Greater Manchester area called Bang Bang MCR. The video itself is called KYFB, which stands for Kill Yourself for B-Roll. Supposedly it took three years to make and it came out on July 10th for a live stream on the Ride UK site. It's still up on the site if you want to go and watch it. It's about 50 minutes long and it's just street bangers from the crews up north. If street riding is not your cup of tea and you're looking for some absolute tech madness, there's a new video up on the Ride UK site with Alex Colborne, Ben Wallace and Tom Justice absolutely slaying it on a mini ramp. It's only a minute and a half, but don't worry, they've packed the bangers in. It's definitely worth giving a watch. Edits coming out of the West Country as well. Emerson Morgan has dropped an absolute fire video for animal bikes basically just killing it in Bristol, all the crazy street, there's a massive roof drop as an ender, and the music basically makes me want to go find a squat rave, but come on, that's Bristol vibes through and through. If you want to watch a street video, but you don't have a whole hour to kill, then I'd recommend watching Polly's new video. Polly's a seriously loose rider from Melbourne, and he puts out some great street footage. First time I came into contact with this dude was at a jam in Brisbane. Polly had shaved boss man Clint Miller's head into a mullet, and then ended up drinking a whole bottle of wine during the jam and stripped off. Somehow we got a fire extinguisher as well. Speaking of Connolly videos, if you haven't watched a new Connolly full length video, Take a Ticket, you've either been living under a rock or you don't actually care about BMX because trust me, you need to watch it. It's sick. It's got absolute banger sections from boss man Clint Miller himself, Alex Hyam, Chris James and so many more. You seriously need to check it out. If full-on riding edits are less your thing, and you're more of a fan of vlogs, then you probably know who Scotty Crammer is, and let's be honest, you probably watch his videos. As everyone knows, Scotty had a terrible crash a few years ago, but he's recently put out another injury update video showing how much he's progressing in his truly inspirational recovery from this. He's put a video up on his channel of him riding around a racetrack, trying to beat his own personal best. In other news, Hoffman Bikes is dropping a whole new range of frames, one of which is Morgan Wade's signature frame. Initially, he thought it was coming in at £7.6. Put the word out, I wasn't surprised it's Morgan Wade. Let's be honest, the guy's doing 20 foot high one-handed double tail whips. You're going to need a strong frame. But £7.6? Turns out it was wrong. The scales are broken and the frame's only coming in at £5.5. On the topic of Hoffman Bikes, Matt Hoffman has put out a sort of FaceTime interview with Brad McDonald talking about photos Brad took of Matt between the year of 1991 and 1993. They tell some funny stories, catch up on some memories, crazy stuff like Matt's injuries from where he used to carry a suture kit to stitch up his own legs to a slightly more gruesome crash involving a railed seat and his ball sack. It's a funny video, if you've got an hour or so, go give it a watch. 
Unfortunately, it's not all good news in BMX this week. Word has reached us that Pascal Lafontaine has unfortunately lost his lengthy battle with cancer. Pascal was a truly inspirational rider. He lost his leg to the disease back in 2015, didn't let this get him down, and in 2019 he dropped an incredible street video that would have been way beyond the average for most riders with four limbs, let alone with three. For this, he won Dig Rider of the Year last year. Truly sad to hear the news that he's no longer with us. Other news for all you mid-schoolers, Jay Miron has put out a video called The Next Chapter. In 2009, he decided to retire from BMX and take up a totally new career making high-end bespoke furniture. It talks about his journey of how he trained in a totally new trade, his first time getting a feature in a bespoke furniture magazine, and his first time getting the cover in a magazine. He's saying how it's almost related to BMX, like you progress through the ranks of being good at it. It's a really interesting video, even if you're not interested in furniture. That's what's been happening recently in BMX. Hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. Please let us know in the comments what you think of it.